Start of Monday. It's October 7th. We got Monday maintenance stuff going on. Andrew's blowing out an air filter. I took a load here this morning in the town. We're set up to kind of get started once we uh, get done doing all the maintenance stuff. So after fuel and uh, getting dusty, which rock guard is it? I've got one broken rock guard. I've had this broken rock guard for a day or so, but it really wasn't causing issues. That sickle section's loose. Broken rock guards. This actually need all replaced because um, it's been run enough that this edge of the rock guards are all getting kind of smoothed over. And since it's smoothing them over, that's part of the cutting surface. So the bean comes in here like it's your finger and you need to have a, you know, a sharper edge and a cut cleaner. A lot of these are getting really kind of rolled on or worn down from the acres it's covered. I walked up to him and he says, I was, I was needing to order some stuff. He goes, so I got on this website and he said, they had a video there. So I clicked on it and he goes, I heard a voice. And he goes, and then your ugly mug got on the yeah. camera. <laughs> there's a there's a lot of those that are questionable. Are you gonna explain to the people that you actually like going places? Like you just don't like getting in them? Like, what's up with this? You gonna okay let's go. Come on. Nope. Yeah. Come on, get up for me. Thank you, Bob. Everybody in. This farm's going to the dogs. my steering it uh, it really doesn't know what's going on so hopefully if I just close out this event it fix itself but this field is done Andrew said that that bin is just about full that it could take some some more soybeans in there but it sounds like it's it's pretty darn close there's something though that I actually wanted to chat about because it's like right now this field just averaged moisture out at 8.4 percent these beans are unbelievably dry there's no chance of rain in the forecast so it's not like we're going to pick back up moisture these beans like the plants are getting a little tough in the morning but they're not picking up moisture themselves so right now we're losing quite a bit of money in terms of like the weight of these dry beans so i think that uh well let's just go talk about the grain view system and maybe what the payback on rehydrating soybeans would look like so this is going to be a really fun part of uh this video here for you guys because we're going to be talking about the roi when we go to to actually rehydrate soybeans this is something that we have not been able to do with this bin yet uh we've been drying and conditioning corn last year it caught when we had uh some grain actually going bad in the bin that was pretty important to catch that but this year like we just talked about there's some dry soybeans in there got to put it into auto it wants to be on i knew it what's it look like to run a height rehydration system on a grain bin like this uh, what's the ROI? What's the payback on the system? All those good things and answer some of those questions. I'm going to enjoy this one. And if you Google, like, one of the things people are like, oh, my gosh, are you going to damage your bin with the beans expanding and stuff like that? They're not going to expand that much. And you're really, you know, look at a soybean when it's at where it's 8% to when it gets to 13. You're not, like, doing that. It's not where it's like these guys on the ground here that are trying to grow and, you know, have gotten wet and have doubled in size type of thing. That's not what you're doing. You're really just putting the weight back into the soybeans. And by putting the weight into the soybeans, you're putting money into your pocket. So I've showcased this system quite a bit. 
uh, from the installation of the system to how to set it up, how to look at it. Actually, they just upgraded some stuff on the website and we'll be showing you guys how to switch this to his hydration system in probably the next video as well. And then we'll recap and see how well things hydrate. But let's talk about the actual physical structures of the bin, which I want to always point out when you go to do something along these lines because people will Google all these things and try and figure it out. Best case scenario for one of these systems, like this is a very good size bin to do this in. This is a 32,000 bushel bin. Uh, and you, what you would be looking for is one CFM per 1,000 bushels of grain. We don't quite have that, but it will work. The other thing that kind of weighs in is Mother Nature is also a part of this scenario here, is that if you have enough run days. Now that run day means, uh, like today, is obviously a good run day. It's rained recently, the humidity's high. So what we're gonna be trying to do is push the moisture back into those soybeans and get them back up from what we'll be using an 8% mark on here shortly, is that you do need those run days. And that means basically where the weather conditions are correct, to rehydrate those beans. If you stay super dry, like you're not gonna be able to do that because you just don't have those conditions. But with the right amount of run days, we should be able to rehydrate this bean, this bin back to 13% from 8%. And the payback is going to kind of, kind of blow your mind. So everybody's favorite educational scenario is back. Bin with a whiteboard propped on a goer because it's raining outside. We're gonna look at numbers. Well, I'll write some on there. So the question is, is how much are you losing by those dry beans? Here's the numbers on that. We'll look at 8% beans, 9% beans, 10% beans, 11% beans, and 12% soybeans. So this is your moisture. So yield loss on these soybeans is not linear necessarily, but if you wanted to do quick math, it's around 1.1%. Give or take a little bit, that's kind of what people say but the actual numbers based on some studies, doing some Googling, is uh, at 8% you lose 5.43% of yield. So this is yield loss. 9% is 4% yield loss. 10% is 3.3% yield loss. At 11% is 2.25% yield loss. And at 12% is 1.14% percent yield loss. That's what you're losing going across the field. Draw a grid out for you. A bid at ADM and Quincy is $9.99 right now. So bear with me, we're gonna roll up to 10. Makes math a lot easier for me. So, uh, so price per bushel loss. We're gonna give me the penny, that makes the math really easy. So per bushel loss is uh, 0.543 cents, you know, so basically you're losing 54 cents. 9% uh, you're losing 40 cents. At 10% you're losing 33 cents per bushel. At 11% you're losing 22.5 cents per bushel, which this is hard writing. At 12% you're losing 11. Point four percent so uh, there you go that just numbers just moved over so like there you go but in terms of per bushel now if we're going to look at this we're going to look at it on a 50 bushel soybean yield another good round number here per acre so loss per acre is what you're looking at here now and your loss per acre is $27.15 is what that comes out to. Uh, this is right at $20 an acre. This is $16.50 per acre on 50 bushel beans. This is $11.25 per acre on 50 bushel beans. And this is $6.50 per acre on 50 bushel beans. So this here is your actual, like your loss that you can see by dry soybeans and it happens. So now the question is ROI of this system. So it's a 32,000 bushel bin. We're gonna use 9% uh, 
uh, which means that if we go back up to 13,000, realistically with the weight, you're not actually gaining more soybeans or whatever, you would be gaining 1,280 bushels if at 13%. And this is what the grain view system is going to do by your your settings and things along those lines to push uh, the right ambient air into the bin to rehydrate and add weight to those soybeans. So that's 1,280 more bushels worth of weight that you're going to add. You're not going to add have actually more soybeans in there. It's just the weight that's getting pushed into there. That that has the possibility of bringing in to you $12,800 worth of more revenue, which is less than one year payback, plus at that point in time, jingle in your pocket. That's pretty darn cool. Like that to me, is the no-brainer of having one of these systems in your grain bin. Have grain storage. We couldn't get it all onto uh, the truck, so we're gonna auger a little bit more into the bin if we can. Uh, and then once we get it on there, then we just got a truck load that we can move. So my GPS is not working, which, let me change this here for you guys, uh, so that it's not flashing on you. And um, it's not working because apparently we've got solar flares going on. So like if you look at this, now it won't let me do it because it can't go in and I've reset all my satellites. But basically when I pin a position, it thinks I'm like 365 feet that way, immediately. So I don't have steering the rest of the day. Oh no, right bandit. That's okay, we can do it without it. Planting wise, that wouldn't be a great deal. When there's a storm raging in your soul Gotta thank God that you're still growing old If them demons you're fighting won't go away Drop on your knees and pray Life can get hard sometimes I know Gotta get up and walk the straight and narrow When they're chasing you down with an old bloodhound And you're running through the fields for your life You gotta get up, son, I know they're gunning for you Thoughts of yesterday Crowd out the visions of today Don't let your past define your name We will all be judged the same someday Life can get hard sometimes, I know You gotta get up and walk straight and narrow When they're chasing you down with an old bloodhound And you're running through the fields for your life 
You gotta get up, son. I know they're gunning for you. Chasing you down with an old bloodhound And you're running through the fields for your life You gotta get up, son, I know we're gunning for you Finish that field, but still um, no satellites. My yield monitor's not calibrated either, so yet to do that. And I'd have to, I need to get the. I know how. I know about how low it's running, but I need to uh, use Dad's 1421 to calibrate that thing. But nine for eight percent beans dry. Why is that? That was weird. I don't know if we're gonna move or uh, haul these beans in. I kinda think we're gonna haul these beans in. I gotta theorize where I'm moving to for tomorrow. We might do a big move and move as far basically away from here as we can or stay close and then end up back here. We don't know yet. We ended up moving over into one of Jim's fields, kind of, kind of, we made a decision. Um, good problem was that my beans didn't all fit onto a semi. Bad problem is, is that we were out of space, so we are actually borrowing Jim's wagon to put my last, like, 200 bushels of beans that are on that wagon onto that cart, so that, uh, that grain cart frees up, and, uh, I don't have to take, like, a small load i've got more beans to cut around here which if you remember when we used the gleaner last year i got that field up here to cut still um it'll probably be some of the last beans that we cut you guys can't see me barely at all so it'll be probably some of the last beans that we cut do or or we maybe we do them later this week who knows we'll find out but uh yeah that's why I didn't want you in a hurry to take those away because I don't want to waste my day tomorrow taking in 200 bushels of beans. So we're borrowing a wagon and then I'll have a parcel here at some point in time. And All right, we'll see you in the morning. That or scale that wagon and uh, just sell them to joint to dad and I or something. You just, like sell it to that. I can, if I, I don't know how this my brain's not working. 